altar that Bezaliel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, hath made, he put before the tabernacle of the law. Solomon and the assembly sought him there. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the law, which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. Verse 7. On that night, the Lord appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, You have shown great mercy to David my father. And have made me king in his place. Now, O oh Lord God, let your promise to David my father be established. For you have made me king over a people like a dust of the earth in multitude. Now, give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge these great people of Yours. Verse 11. Then God said to Solomon, Because this was in your heart, you have not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have asked for long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people, ever whom I have made you King, can you give me verse 12 as well? Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. Can I have an amen in the house? The Bible tells us in the passage that we have read, of what God did to Solomon when God gave him the privilege and the opportunity to lead the people of God. And that's why, for those of you that have your bulletin, I've talked about the issue of the priority of worship, which is of essence, which we saw in that passage of Scripture, the promise, the prominence of wisdom, which Solomon asked of and brought significance to his life. I also talked about the provision, the provision of wealth that God gave to him and the role of parents. What David did that helped Solomon to get to where he is today. This morning, looking at that passage of scripture, I want to discuss with us very briefly what God wants me to share with you as we talk about being strengthened, as we talk about being sustained, as we talk about moving to significance from God's perspective. Looking at this passage of scripture, I'll be talking on what I've titled, Provoking God's Blessings at the Altar. Provoking God's blessings at the altar. Provoking God's blessings at the altar. The Bible tells us where we have read. Solomon had come to the throne. He has been established on the throne. God has helped him. At that position. He could have felt, I'm comfortable. I can do as I like. But the Bible tells us in the passage that we have read that Solomon, having been established, having been strengthened by God, having been sustained by God, having been exalted exceedingly, what did he do? The Bible says he spoke to all the leaders. He led in the front and he led them to the altar. He led them to the tabernacle. He remembered that his father David 
And I'll be talking about that much later, not today. The role of parents. He had seen something in the life of David that made him to say, no, there is a force by the altar. So what did he do? The Bible says he led the leaders of thousands and hundreds. He led the judges and they went to the altar. To do what? To worship. To give preference to God. And that was what brought the significance that made Solomon to stand out in his time. What is the place that we we'll call the altar? What is the purpose of the altar? And what are the pleasantness that you can get if you can provoke God at the altar? The place of the altar, the purpose of the altar, the pleasantness you can enjoy at the altar. The altar... By the word altar, I made to understand that the Hebrew word that was translated to mean altar means to slaughter. To slaughter. So it means that the place called altar is a place where sacrifices are made. You slaughter. In the Old Testament, animals for sacrifices to make rites to God, the Almighty God, in the case of those who know God as the Almighty God, and to unbelievers, to other gods. But it's a place of sacrifice. That's the altar. So Solomon knew that there is a place where you need to contact God and you don't go there empty handed. In the passage that we have read, the Bible tells us Solomon led the people and what did he do? The Bible says, look at verse 5 of our text. Now the bronze altar that Bezaliel, the son of Uri, and the son of Hor has made, he put before the altar of the Lord. Solomon and the assembly sought him, sought God there. Solomon knew the altar is a place where you seek after God. The altar is a place where you seek after God. Solomon knew that. Having been established on his throne, he was still seeking after God. What does that tell us? Whatever your position, whatever your status, however big or small you may be, you must seek after God. Can you say with me, I will seek after God? Hey, can you say confidently, I will seek after God? So you find out that the place of the altar is a place where you seek after God and you offer something to God. And when you look into the Old Testament, you know that the altar could either be a place in the open for everyone to come, but it could also be a place where the individual worships God. So when we talk about the altar, I'm talking about the place of the altar. That's why you find that for the patriarchs, as they move and they contact God on their journey, what did they do? They will put up a stone, make it as an altar, and do what? And worship God. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Look at verse 7. After God has called Abraham and had a conversation with him and told him he was starting something unique with him, what is it that he did? 
Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants I will give this land. That was God meeting with Abraham. At that point, what did Abraham do? And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So the place of the altar, yes, is a place that could be a corporate place where everybody gather, but it could also be an individual place, a place for a personality wherein you meet God. Look at Genesis chapter 26. When Isaac had his own encounter, what did he do? Genesis 26. Verses 25, 23 to 25. Genesis 26, from 23 to 25. Then he went up from there to Beersheba, talking about Isaac. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the Lord, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. Verse 25. What did he do? He built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent there and there Isaac servants dog away. I'm talking about the place of the altar. Yes, it's a corporate place where we can gather together like Solomon led the people. But it could also be a place for an individual where you contact God, where you meet God, where God appears to you. Solomon had that understanding that the altar is a place where you meet God. Where you can change destiny. Where you can make things so happen. No wonder. He led the people. He was in the forefront. To contact God. At the altar. Hallelujah. You may ask. Pastor. Yes. The place of the altar. For the individual. For the corporate entity exists. But let's also understand that in the Old Testament, they had to come with a sacrifice. But in the New Testament, Christ became the sacrifice that had been made for everyone. And he was laid on that altar. And he became the sacrifice for every one of us. So we don't need to come and sacrifice goats and ram again. Christ became the sacrifice for all of us. Hebrews chapter 9 has this to tell us. From verse 25. Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 25. Not that he should offer himself often. As the high priest enters the most holy place. Every year with the blood of another. Hallelujah. Verse 26. He then will have done to suffer once, often since the foundations of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So Christ became the sacrifice for all. Christ became the sacrifice for all. So you don't need to come with your goats and ram. Christ became the sacrifice. And with him, we can approach the presence of God. That was why the Bible tells us the moment he, that sacrifice was accepted by God, the veil of the temple cut into two, we now have access to meet God. We don't need to go through any high priest anymore. We become royal priesthood in the New Testament. 
I'm talking about the place of the altar. So when you understand the place of the altar, knowing what Christ has done, so as an individual, we can now know that to worship God now must be, if you are a child of God, in spirit and in truth. So when Jesus had an encounter with that woman in John chapter 4, look at what Jesus said from verse 23. Jesus had this to say. John chapter 4 from verse 20. Jesus spoke. Our fathers worship on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. Verse 21. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 22. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 23. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers we worship the Father in spirit and truth for the Father is seeking such to worship him. So the place of the altar Yes, why we could still have a physical place becomes the altar from within. We are in by the Spirit of God in you. You can worship God. So it means wherever you find yourself, you can contact God. You can meet God. Solomon understood that. So what did he do in his own case? He led the people. And they went to the altar. A meeting place with God. To contact God. And do you know that contact of Solomon with God that night changed his scenario. For him to have been there means that he had a humble spirit. When you come to the altar, you come submissively. You don't come arrogantly. You submit to the God, the almighty God, who dwells in the altar. It's a place of sacrifice where you surrender all. And Solomon did that. He offered a thousand rams. Something was released. I'm talking about provoking God's blessings at the altar. When he did that, the Bible says that same night, God looked at Solomon and said, you didn't ask for this. You didn't ask for this. You didn't ask. You asked for wisdom. Other times I'll be talking about the prominence of wisdom. And God said, ask whatsoever you want. Listen to me, church. We must all in our walk with God come to a point where we provoke God at the altar. Whether at your private family altar, individual altar, the corporate altar of God in the church, to provoke God. But listen to me. You must be ready to release something. You must come in submissiveness to God. You must come in humility to God. You must know that you are nothing except by him. All that Solomon was saying is, yes, I am king. But I cannot rule these people. Great people of God, as the dust of the earth, except you empower me to do it. Thank God for where you are today, but is pride not eating you up? Thank God for your achievements today, but has it not come into your head? 
Solomon came submissively. He recognized that there is a God in heaven who controls the affairs here on earth. And when I submit to him, he can strengthen me, he can sustain me, he can lead me to significance. He was ready to offer something. Sacrificially. And God looked at that and said, this person has provoked me at this place of the altar. And God told him, it's not your wisdom and knowledge I'm going to give you. Wealth I will give you. Honor I will give you. The things you don't ask for, I will give you. He understood you can get something unique if you contact God and you provoke him at the altar. Listen to me, church. We live in times of which there is so much uncertainty around us. Can we as individuals and corporately contact God on our altar such that we can be sure that we will enjoy his strength, we will enjoy his sustainability, and he will lead us to significance, irrespective of what's happening around us. Everything around us is bringing fear. And it's as if there's so much uncertainty around. But can you make up your mind? Can I make up my mind? I am ready to provoke God on the altar. Sacrificially. Because I need a strength to go through. I need a sustainability to see me through. I want to stand out in significance of the fact that God has done this for me. Just like Solomon individually took that decision and walked at it. Listen to me. You and I must be ready to do that. Sacrificially. And let me end with this scripture. In James chapter 2, the Bible tells us when you talk about faith and works, and the Bible says that Abraham, when he offered Isaac on the earth, that was counted as righteousness for him. And that faith without works is dead. We must get to a point wherein in provoking God at the altar, our faith must be coupled with action. Faith must be coupled with what? Hey, you are not talk, talking. Faith must be coupled with what? Action. That's what Abraham did.
Are you connected to the online church of the unlimited people? Join Foursquare we see on all our social media platforms to get real-time updates on services, stream live programs from any part of the world, watch previous messages, join Christian topical conversations, and get a chance to win some prizes. Foursquare will see is live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can connect with us via your phone social media applications. How? Select Facebook app on your phone app list and search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on like. For Twitter, select Twitter app, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on follow. For Instagram, select Instagram app, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on follow. And for YouTube, select YouTube app on your phone, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on subscribe. If you don't have any of these apps on your phone, Go to your Play Store for Android devices or go to your Apple Store for iOS devices. Search for any of these social media apps and install them. After installation, you will need to log in with your app account username and password. And if you don't have an account with them yet, you will need to register. Click on Create an Account and fill in your basic information and get connected. First Gospel Church will say, we are the assembly of the unlimited people.